I'm so excited to be here today with my friend Alex Fogg, the fish guy, <laughs> in Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Yep. Hi, Alex. Hey, how's it going? It's going so great. I am so excited that we're getting to talk about your favorite thing, fish and scuba diving. Absolutely. Finally getting you here at the destination to experience it firsthand. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. I had the best time fishing today. Yeah, what'd you catch? Oh my goodness, we caught so many fish with Gabby. She's amazing. But that's your first time fishing, right? My first uh -huh. time fishing ever in my life. Yeah, she made it look easy, didn't she? Oh my goodness, <laughs> she's amazing. Yep. I definitely think people have to come here and experience mm -hmm. the water. So Absolutely. talk a little bit about why is fishing so great here in Destin and Fort Walton. Yeah, so here in Destin in particular um, is known as the luckiest fishing village. And it's a little more than a village now, but it Destin's really been on the map for fishing for a very long time. Um, we access deep water very, very quickly so we can capture everything from your inshore species of you know, red drum and uh, uh, speckled trout all the way to your snappers and groupers midshore. And then offshore, you can find your marlins, your tunas, your mahi-mahi and all that. So there's really everything that you can target here in the destination in a relatively short amount of uh, distance, which is, is certainly attractive to a lot of people who don't want to spend a whole day on the water, maybe want to just get out there and catch a few fish and come home for dinner. Oh, right, because some people go fishing, they have to spend an hour or two getting to the place. Or where even longer. Going. I mean, there's some places, some other destinations, they're going eight, nine, ten hours to get to the fishing grounds. Here, you can get to those same depths, those same fishing grounds in maybe an hour. Oh my gosh, and it's, the water's so beautiful. It is, it is, and today, I mean, you caught all this stuff within sight of land, right? Yes. Yep, yep, so Red it's- Red snapper, mm -hmm. what was that, a special kind of jack we caught? Amber jack, Amber yeah, jack. And those get 100 pounds. You were catching babies, but even the babies will put up, put up an awesome fight. No, it was, mm -hmm. I really never tried it. I mean, we talked about it before. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go to the water, they, if they're gonna fish, or surf or people like you and I, mm -hmm. we want to go underwater. Yeah, and see those diving. fish. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it's also important that the trip that you went on today, you're catching a lot of species that aren't in season. You can still go fishing and you don't have to fill the cooler with a bunch of fish. You can go and practice catch and release fishing, which is super sustainable, but it's also really, really enjoyable. You can get your awesome pictures, learn a little bit about the fish, get a little tired. Your arms are probably hurting a little bit and then, uh, you know, go back and see them diving tomorrow when we head out there. <laughs> and can you talk a little bit about, I know you have a, a lot of restaurants here in the area yeah. that if you keep your catch, you can eat your catch yep. for dinner. Yep, yeah, they call it hook and cook or go off the table. There's a lot of different, uh, I guess, terms. But if you go out fishing and you catch some fish that are open or in season, you can come back and your captain and crew will fillet those fish for you. As opposed to you going home and trying to figure out how to cook them or maybe you aren't comfortable cooking the fish, you can pretty much go to any restaurant here in Destin, Fort Walton Beach and they'll prepare those fish for you however you want. They usually give you a few options, you pick a few sides, they charge you a small nominal fee and you walk away with an awesome meal and any leftovers that you have to bring home to the house. Yeah, that's amazing because otherwise you have to put the fish on dry ice to get it home. Yeah, you know, traveling with fish is difficult. You gotta get a cooler. It's, it's a lot better to go out for your day of fishing catch what you're going to eat over the next few days while you're staying here, eat it at the different restaurants, it ends up being really, really inexpensive, and then leave without a cooler and all that dry ice and leaking ice and smelly fish. You don't need all that. <laughs> but even if you do, you can still travel home relatively easy. It's just so much easier to bring it to a restaurant or cook it when you're here. And what about families? Is, is fishing a good thing for young children? Fishing is an outstanding thing for, for young children and families. So think about your experience today. It was, I mean, how long were you on the water? Four hours maybe? Yes. Yeah. So you can easily wake up, have breakfast, go out, have a great day of fishing. Even if it's your first time fishing, you figure it out pretty quick. Gabby puts you on the fish. There's a lot of other captains here that'll put you on the fish. And then you can work your way up to those trips where you're going out for 12 hours or two days or however long you want to spend out there. So I think the, the experience that you had today is more of that gateway, you know, into the fishery. And once you start to learn to love it and, you know, want to catch bigger and better things, you start to move up into the, into the, the longer and longer trips. And for me, it was so awesome to be out with a captain who is a woman. Yeah, yeah. So, and that that's something pretty awesome here. I mean, we have we have a number of women captains, and I mean, they kill it. I mean, you, it, there's a lot of fish here to have um, or to, to get after. So, you know, give it a try when you come. Okay, so you and I met at the scuba diving show at DEMA. Gosh, yeah, what, 2015, something like that. 16. It was a long time ago. A yep. long uh -huh. time ago, when you were on a special panel talking yep. about the lionfish. Exactly. So yep. for people that are watching that don't understand, mm -hmm. maybe they've heard of lionfish and they think they're beautiful and don't understand why in Florida and the Caribbean, we're not that happy yep. about the lionfish. Yeah. So, you know, 30,000 foot view, 
Lionfish are that pretty fish, like you just said. People love them in their aquariums, but unfortunately people don't have aquariums for forever. And as opposed to maybe rehoming those lionfish or finding some other place to put them, they dumped them into the waters behind their house, not thinking much of it, out of sight, out of mind. Unfortunately, male, female, one thing led to another, and now we have lionfish all up and down the Eastern Seaboard, the Bahamas, into the Caribbean, South America, and in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, here in the Gulf of Mexico, specifically Destin, Fort Walton Beach, we have densities higher than anywhere else in their invaded range. Um, I spent a lot of time in my master's thesis studying lionfish life history, age, growth, reproduction, diet, parasitism, commercialization, tournaments, everything. But one of the cool parts of my master's was meeting all the divers throughout the Gulf of Mexico that all kind of came together to harvest lionfish to help the environment, but also help with my work. Um, and you know, it, it really spurred a lot of the tournaments that we have today. Um, honestly, the, the Emerald Coast Open that we host here in Destin Fort on Beach now started, it, it started with my master's thesis as a, a mechanism for me to get a whole bunch of lionfish for my work in just a, a weekend of time. But you know, people learn to, to expect that every May. And even though my master's thesis is over and a lot of the, the hardcore research that I was doing on lionfish has really come to an, end, to an end, it's still an awesome tourism product product that we have here in Dustin Fort Walton Beach. So even if you come in red snapper or clothes, amberjack or clothes, or you don't feel like harvesting some of those bigger fish and you're a diver, you can go out there and harvest some of these lionfish and bring them back. You can bring them to those restaurants like I was talking about earlier and have them cook them up or you can bring them home. In a lot of cases, people actually sell the lionfish. So you can, that's one species of fish that you really don't need a, a significant amount of licenses in order to sell to the market. And you can end up paying for your dive trips very, very easy. Yes, so mm -hmm. lionfish are an invasive species yes. in our ecosystem. Yeah, I guess I never even touched on that. I went down a different tangent. No, but no, you, yeah. your tangent is yeah. excellent. But just for the people that yeah. want to uh -huh. understand why as scuba divers and environmentalists, we're concerned about the lionfish. They don't mm -hmm. have predators here. Yep. They breed a lot here. Yes. They are harming our coral mm -hmm. reefs. Mm -hmm. So you have this tournament coming up, the Emerald Coast. Emerald Coast Open. Emerald yep. Coast Open. And mm -hmm. and how many lionfish do you think will come out of the water on average? Oh man, I'm gonna knock on wood and, and assuming the weather's gonna be good, the numbers that we're seeing with some of the survey work that we're doing, it's setting ourselves up to where it could be a banner year and a record breaking year. The most lionfish that we've gotten in this event is 19,000 fish. So we're talking a lot of fish, and that was its inaugural year in 2019. Um, in the years since, we've had 14,000. Another year we had 8,000, but the weather was real bad. This year, it seems to be kind of a perfect storm of a lot of participation, great weather, and a lot of lionfish. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens this weekend. So how many divers in, will be in the water? Um, so right now we have right around 130 divers that have registered. Um, we suspect we'll probably be in the 150 to 160 diver range. We usually have a lot of last minute signups. Um, but again, the more divers there are, the more fish we get out of the water. There's some hardcore teams that are participating. There's some people who are also n very novice. This will be their first tournament they've ever participated in. But I will say, you know, while they may not be competing for the most lionfish, we are providing prizes and incentives for smallest and biggest lionfish. One year, uh, I guess 2021, we had a girl go out and she shot one fish and she ended up winning largest lionfish. She won $5,000. And she's not, a, she's not a bona fide, you know, lionfish huntress that goes out and kills gajillions of lionfish. She shot a few in her, in her life and she just happened to find the right one that day and, and walk away with some cash. So there's a lot of people that are coming to the destination, going out with local dive shops, going out to just have a great day on the water and they may find that small one or they may find that big one. So it's, it's just keeping your eyes open to find those winners. That's mm -hmm. really incredible. Yeah. And from your research and all these derbies, mm -hmm. what I remember when we had the workshop at DEMA was mm -hmm. that the derbies make a significant impact on the population. On a very local level though. So even though we're removing upwards of 19,000 lionfish from Destin, Fort Walton Beach waters, that's really a small halo around a much, much bigger problem. And honestly, over the course of about six months or so, those lionfish end up repopulating the reefs that we cleaned them off. So again, lionfish are causing lots of problems. Um, fortunately, we haven't seen the collapse of the ecosystem like maybe we were theorizing early in their invasion. We still have grouper, we still have snapper, we still have sharks, we still have the things that we expect to have, but you're throwing another stressor into an already stressed system. I mean, you have you know warming waters, you have lack of food, you have overfishing, you have a lot of stressors on these fish, and you just throw one more in there, there's, it's just not good. Um, the good news is, is we can host these events and, and do removals on a, on a regular basis to kind of keep our local fishery healthy or give it a little bit of a fighting chance. And here in Destin, Fort Walton Beach, we have the largest four hire fishing fleet in the world, believe it or not. Wow. So 
our, our destination is very, very dependent on fishing. So we need to do everything that we can to protect the fishery. And I, I know that people really are working hard to make a difference here and taking mm -hmm. care of the environment. Uh, I also remember when we were at DEMA uh, on the panel you were on, do I remember correctly, they were trying to train some chefs mm -hmm. to be, yeah. to use lionfish. Yep. So that's, that's a common misconception. I mean, when I talk to people about lionfish for the first time, a lot of times the first thing that pops in their head is, oh my God, they're poisonous. You can't eat those. That's not the case at all. They are venomous, which means you can't get injected by them like a snake, but you very much can eat the flesh and there's, there's no risk to eating it. You don't have to prepare it any special way. You don't have to fillet it a special way. Just don't get poked. And even if you do get poked, you aren't gonna die. It hurts. I'll tell you, it doesn't feel good, I promise. But you flam like any other fish and you're, you be careful of those spines and you're gonna be okay. Um, chefs, especially ones that have worked with it for a little while are becoming more and more excited about getting lionfish on the menu. Even though it'll never be a permanent fixture on their menu because it's just such an inconsistent supply because of the whole diving aspect of it. But, um, you know, they're excited to put it on the menu because it, it fetches a much higher value than your red snapper and your grouper and other things that you're used to seeing on the menu. It is not a trash fish at all. It comes with a really awesome story about helping the environment, but it tastes awesome. It's not like other invasive species that just are crappy. I mean, you got to put so much seasoning on it or you got to boil the crap out of it. You got to do all this stuff to it to make it palatable. Lionfish, you can eat anyway. You can eat it as sushi, fried, uh, uh, you know, in a sandwich and tacos, however you want. And that's here in Destin, Fort Walton Beach, that's what we've really tried to do since we started Emerald Coast Open in 2019 is getting fish into the hands of the restaurant to allow them to show the versatility of the fish, but also show the public, hey, it's awesome, awesome to eat and that they're willing to pay for it. So we have the Emerald Coast Open Restaurant Week where uh, I guess this year we have nine, eight, eight restaurants that are that are serving lionfish over the course of the week. Each restaurant has their own featured night. Um, none of them prepare the, the lionfish the same way, which again shows you the versatility of the fish. Um, I think uh, the, the first night it was this awesome um, panko encrusted preparation with like a mango sauce. We've had traditional fried. We've had uh, more of a Creole preparation with blackened over some corn machu. Tonight it's going to be tacos and fajitas and other uh, Mexican uh, preparations. We have sushi in a couple other nights. So, it, it, and the crazy thing is, even though we're giving these restaurants tons and tons of lionfish and they have hundreds of servings of lionfish, they're selling out within a couple hours. So when people see lionfish on the menu, they get excited. I think we've done a pretty good job about highlighting lionfish here. I wish we could. I wish we could get more lionfish into the hands of the chefs for them to continue to prepare this for a longer period of time. Um, but you know, we get it to them when we can. It's it's really incredible what you've done. Can you tell people a little bit? How did you get involved with fish? Is your family yeah. loved to scuba dive or fish? Well, or? so you know, I grew up in a navy family. Um, so we bounced around. We were always in a coastal town. Grew up with my dad and my mom talking about being on the water all the time. Um, my dad grew up in Clearwater, Florida, so we spent a lot of time down there with the grandparents and the aunts and uncles. We'd go fishing. Fishing was, all, that's all we wanted to do. And then hearing my dad talk about scuba diving and snorkeling and spear fishing, I was like, man, I've got to do that. So when I got into high school, senior year in high school, um, I decided, hey, I'm going to go get scuba dive certified. And that was up in Maryland. Ended up getting certified in a quarry in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, when you get certified in those kind of places, it's amazing a lot of people stick with it because it was cold, it, there really wasn't much life, it really wasn't that great. But then I went to college at the University of South Carolina and started meeting a lot of divers in the community and started going to, uh, going to, yeah, I started going to uh, the coast there in Charleston, South Carolina, doing a lot of diving there. Um, and that's when I really started to see lionfish. Lionfish were in the Carolinas in, I guess, 2008, 2007. So it was still early, but that's where I shot my first lionfish um, and started, uh, you know, making the decision that I want to, you know, really go into marine biology with my career. Again, it would keep me near the water, but it would keep me around fish and hopefully keep me diving. Um, I guess fortunately or unfortunately, the BP oil spill happened right as I was graduating college and a lot of jobs opened up on the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get my foot in the door working in fisheries, looking at the impacts of the oil spill. Um, but as that money was starting to dry up, lionfish were just getting to the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. So that allowed me to kind of create my own project and work it into my master's thesis. And next thing we know, we're, we're here harvesting tens of thousands of lionfish every year, still studying the invasion, still learning everything we can about lionfish. And they call you the fish guy, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, fish, fish guy, yeah, that's one, one of the names, <laughs> one of the names, but I, I really enjoy fish, really enjoy being on the water can't get enough of it. Um, you know, I used to 
used to really like just get underwater and harvesting everything in my site, whether it's grouper, snapper, amberjack, lionfish, it didn't matter, all of it, I wanted it all. I've done a lot of commercial spear fishing, a lot of commercial fishing. Um, recently, you know, I've, I've dialed that back a little bit. I've done a lot more time spending time in the water taking pictures, taking video. It, it, you know, I've talked to a lot of uh, folks who were much later in their diving career and they kind of followed that similar track. They wanted to harvest everything and now they don't harvest anything and all they do is take pictures. Well, I don't think that's ever going to be the case because I'm always going to be harvesting lionfish. I'm always going to be bringing up, you know, other fish home for dinner. Um, it, it's certainly a, a change that I've seen with, with some of the, the my, my diving habits recently. And what do you think when, what, do, what, what would you most want people to take away from your really extensive experience and knowledge mm -hmm. that, that, you know, I, one of the things I think about is it really makes a difference mm -hmm. what one person does. And mm -hmm. I think some people feel worried, like it, it's not that big. Like you said, the woman that hadn't speared very much yeah. still won an award. Yeah. That maybe can you, uh, some encouragement for like, they're not too young, they're not too old, it's yeah. not too late. Well, I mean, anybody, anybody getting into scuba diving, you don't have to go and harvest lionfish on your first dive. Get comfortable in the water, get diving see some of the lionfish, watch some other people harvest them, and then give it a try yourself. You'll find it very addicting, and it's actually extremely easy. I mean, it's like a game of whack-a-mole. They're just sitting there on the on the, on the the bottom or around the reef, and, and you can harvest them and bring it home pretty easily. There's a lot of awesome equipment out there, like the zookeeper, that you, know, you never have to even come in contact with the fish. There's really no risk to getting stung. You still have to be careful diving, but you don't have to worry about getting stung. So what I, what I tell people is, you know, give it a try. If you don't like it, it's okay, but you've tried it, and then you can talk about it to other people who maybe are interested in trying it. The other thing I like to tell people is they don't even have to get in the water. Mm -hmm. If they just go to a restaurant and eat lionfish, yep. that makes a difference. Yep, and a lot of people who are here and trying lionfish are, are tourists. They aren't divers in a lot of cases. They're just here with their family, uh, you know, right, right at the beginning of the summer, and they're seeing lionfish on the menu. Maybe it's the first time they've ever had it, but they're gonna go back to Ohio. They're gonna go back to Atlanta, Birmingham, California, wherever they're from, and they may ask their restaurant, their fancy restaurant, hey, you know, do you guys carry lionfish? And if enough people do that, those restaurants are gonna to start to hear that and realize there's maybe a missed opportunity there and try and source lionfish. And those fancy restaurants that are far away, they're gonna pay a lot of money for that lionfish. And one thing that humans are really good about is capitalizing on something that's that's wanted or needed and there's there's a price tag on it. So if you put a, a big price tag on lionfish, there's gonna be a lot, of, lot more lionfish coming out of the water, that's for sure. I think that it's a really interesting way that you don't necessarily have, you know, people say to me, I don't know how to swim, but it really does make a yeah, difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just ask for it in the restaurants. I mean, you're still doing a difference there. And the more lionfish we can get out of the water and put on the plates and into your belly, the better. And what about um, some other things? I know now we're in May, but last mm -hmm. month, April was mm -hmm. Earth Day. Yep. And I find that some people, when they're thinking about Earth Day or Earth Month, are always thinking about, you know, beach cleanup, which mm -hmm. is, of course, yeah. very important. Yep. But what are some simple things people could do all year long that might help the ocean? Well, so, you know, when people go diving here, you're diving on the same reefs that people are fishing on. So there's a lot of debris that ends up on the reef. Sometimes stuff blows off the boat and ends up sinking to the bottom right there next to the reef or fishing line, hooks, uh, 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 monofilament, um, lead, all that ends up on the reef. And if you just pick up a couple pieces of lead and go down with a pair of shears or a knife and cut some of the mono that maybe is entangled around the reef and bring that up with you, even if you're just bringing up a little ball of it or you know five or six ounces of lead, it's still doing a, it's still doing a, a, you know, a lot to, to benefit the reef system that you're diving, but also for the critters that live there. And is there anything like people that live in a landlocked place? Is there are there different choices people that can make that could help help the ocean even from far away? Um, so you know, trying to minimize the amount of plastics that that people are using. I mean, granted, plastics are really easy. There's a lot of things that you really can't cut out of your life, or maybe it's not financially feasible. But there are certainly things. You know, skip the straw. Try not to try not to get a, a plastic cup at a restaurant. At the end of the day, you may be hundreds of miles inland, but that plastic cup very well may end up in a river and floating its way down and end up in the ocean or just polluting the rivers, um, fill up our landfills. Just try and cut the plastic. That's probably the, the biggest thing that I can suggest to people. Granted, I still use lots of plastics, but you know, over the years, it's certainly something I'm a little more aware about. It's so great. So if someone is so excited and they mm -hmm. want to be a scuba diver yep. and they want to grow up and be a mm -hmm. marine biologist like you, yep. Any last words before we leave you? What what can someone do to get yeah, started? Yeah, stick with it. Um, but go to your local local dive shop and try diving. Um, and if you know you don't have a local dive shop, 
come to Destin Four Wall and Beach. There's plenty of dive shops here that can get you in the water in just a couple days just to try it and see if you like it. And I'm telling you what, if you come here to Destin Four Wall Beach to dive here as opposed to a quarry up in Pennsylvania, you're probably going to stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. And if people want to find you, if they have questions, what's yep. the best way to learn more about you yeah. and Destin? So you learn more about our programs and the things that we're working on. Uh, you can go to DestinFWB.com and then there's a coastal resource tab and that talks about all the lionfish work, reefs, diving, pretty much anything to do with the water that our programs are involved with they can learn about. All right, and we'll put that link in the show notes. Yep. But I am so excited to go diving with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. It's and great. I love that I got to go fishing. Definitely. And we hope it is the biggest catch of lionfish. Yep. For, Fingers for this crossed. Weekend. It's going to be great. And thank you so much, honestly, for really caring about our planet and the oceans and making such a difference. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was great talking.